It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where a couple are at. <laughs> They're here right now. I'm here with you. It is another beautiful DJ roundtable. And we're a little sure-handed tonight. Uh, we have a lot of DJs out on vacation, which happens is summertime. Family and friends and things going on. And, you know, again, life gets in the way. Uh, and not to sound bad, it's always great to have any DJ here. Again, we're all doing this. We're not here getting paid millions of dollars. Well, maybe Jeff is, but I'm not. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> we do this and have fun. And hopefully you're having fun as well watching this over on YouTube or on Twitch or anywhere. And hopefully you're enjoying yourself. If you do enjoy yourself here on Twitch, make sure you hit the follow button, follow on Twitch. If you're over on the tubes, please, 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 I beg you, if you want to help me slay the algorithm beast over at YouTube, I need a few things. I need shares. I need comments. I need thumbs up. Do all that stuff is the important thing. But also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, click the thumbs up, bell icon. Do all that. It's greatly appreciated. It helps uh, grow the channel. It helps grow this show. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you tell another DJ about the show. Just like the intro says, tell another DJ about the show to help us grow and answer questions that you may have. Uh, other thing coming up on the 23rd, again, mark your calendar on the 23rd, we're gonna have a guest on and he's gonna reveal a new product here on the show. So again, depends on everything going on, but that's what we're scheduling for the 23rd. And also I have coming on in September, another thing to mark your calendar, don't have a firm date yet, probably, probably the second week of September, but we're going to have this sound couple on, which if you watched them on YouTube, they're up in Minneapolis, Minnesota area, and they do sound for bands and uh, some DJs and stuff like that. And we're going to have them on. Uh, the two of them will be awesome. And then uh, we're going to get a couple other DJs, guest DJs come on here and there too, and make sure that, uh, you know, again, we hear voices and hear things from all the up and coming YouTubers, as well as YouTubers have been around for quite a while. Because, again, we want to make sure we have as many voices as possible to share the great information here on the show and to share everything what we do. And if you have a comment, question, critique, criticism, put it down below. Say something. Say at least hi. Say something. It helps out tremendously. And Mikey Mike, I see you there. Good morning, everyone. Man, no one from the Northeast. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. You know, it's, it's a hard one to get a hold of because, uh, you know, it all boils down to what people are available. And I try to ask. I don't have anyone from Northeast. Yes, Mike. So I am working on that. I've been reaching out my uh, my questions to people and asking people, are they available? Some are not uh, due to the fact they're busy. But you do have Jeff. He's North Carolina. That's East, at least. <laughs> he at least it's represents East. the East Coast a little bit. and. <laughs> And Mike, you're almost you're almost the Midwest, so <laughs> we're far enough east. We're not being affected by the hurricane over here. So yeah, there you go. And the funny thing is that actually here in Chicago tonight, uh, the hurricane it went through uh, Texas. Uh, we're getting remnants of it. Uh, where I'm at, I'm getting rain. The south suburbs, the south part of the city, they're getting inundated pretty heavily. And where I was watching the weather, and in Indiana. Um, in Whiting and other areas right by the uh, lakefront, uh, they were actually looking at like 3.9 inches of rain fall in that area. It was actually purple on the map. So I was like, oh, man, that's that's some heavy rain. Hopefully the people are safe there. And, you know, I, I saw the people down in Texas. Hopefully everyone's safe down there as well. We have a lot of DJ friends down in Texas. And if you're a DJ in the area, I know that uh, uh, Nathan and uh, Mike um, – James, both of them are in the path of the rain. Hopefully they're safe, and we want to wish everyone to be safe. Uh, let's see here. Mike said he's always here. Yes, Mike, you're here when you can get here, and we appreciate it. And you got humidity this evening. Well, you're going to get some more thanks to the remnants of the hurricane that went through uh, uh, Texas and came out of the Gulf. 
But uh, with that said, you know, uh, like, like, I, uh, like I said before, if I could talk right, that's one of the things I always get tongue tied. <laughs> Um, like I said before, we have uh, just myself and Jeff here right now. I'm hoping to get a couple more. We'll see what happens. It's like anything else. Uh, we always go through stuff. But we were actually talking before the beginning of the show. And uh, if you guys have not seen it yet, uh, uh, Matt, DJ Salsas, which is on vacation this week. That's one of the people who are not here. Uh, he did a really cool uh, footage it's drone footage that he started out uh, outside and flew in. And it was um, a really, really, really cool shot from uh, a drone. And I don't know whose drone it was. I, I just saw the video. I saw it. Had not got a chance to talk to Matt again. He's on vacation. I'm not going to bug him on vacation and ask him questions. So that's something we'll ask for next week. But the one of the things I got, like before, I, I talked about before, <clears throat> I got a little drone just for myself, not for for the show or not for uh, me to record for uh, weddings, just to have fun, just to say, hey, I have, a, I have a little cool little drone. I can do stuff. You know, I can look around the neighborhood. Uh, I wanted to bring it on the 4th of July, but unfortunately, uh, my little pupper, uh, like I said before last week, she had a little surgery done, so I can't really go outside because she wants to go outside so bad. Um she can't. She's um, only allowed to go outside on a leash for a few minutes for a quick walk and then right back in. So it's it's one of the things that I want to take it out a little bit more, and I will be uh, hopefully uh, maybe this week or this coming weekend, depending on how everything works out. But, uh, Jeff, I wanted to ask you, when you, um, when you do stuff, and I know you do a lot of recordings and you do a lot of video for YouTube, and, you know, we were talking a little bit about uh, – you know, things that we run into, we see stuff after we take a picture or we record something, then we go back and fix it. When you see that, when you see, you know, a mistake that you did on your setup, on your gear, light off, that's not straight, that's not straight. Or like I, I got a picture I took of a wedding, uh, um, a wedding show I did. Uh, I didn't notice until after I took the picture, looking through the pictures is a wheel of the cart the, the the side of the uh, of the tablecloth was up on the wheel, so I had to pull a tablecloth, you know, just make sure, pull up, pull it down, just mistake like that happens. But do you go through and look through your pictures and your video at the gig or afterwards and go, oh, yeah, I forgot to do that. Next time I got to remind myself to do that. What, what do you usually do? What's your method? Yeah, I mean, it happens. It happens to the best of us. And, you know, like I said before, you know, during setup, you know, you're in a rush sometimes. Sometimes you're behind schedule. Um, you know, for, for most of us, we have a routine uh, when we're setting up gear. Um, so it, it's um, it's one of those things where sometimes you see it. Uh, if you if you left something out or misplaced something, sometimes uh, you don't until you're like, for instance, you know, when I was putting my TV on uh, the, my uh, DJ stand, I slid it over so I could get closer to the HDMI input. And normally I slide it right back to the middle and center it up. Uh, this one particular time I forgot to do that and did not catch it until I was editing the video uh, the next day. So it happens uh, sometimes, you know, when that does happen and, and you um, and you catch it after the fact, it just reinforces your, you know, intentions the next time to catch it before, you know, the crowd shows up. But it does happen, um, you know, for, for most of us, like I say, there's a routine that you get into a habit of doing things a certain way that work for you. And uh, whether it's um, the procedure, the the steps that you go through to set up and you follow those steps each time, or if it's a certain way that, you know, your setup looks, um, sometimes that's what you go by. So, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where you just got to, um, you know, keep an eye on it. And I like to... Um, when I'm done setting up is take a video or a snapshot of my setup, just so I have it sometimes. Sometimes I'll put it in the video 
Um, and that's usually when I will detect something that is not right. There's a, a light out of uh, misplaced or one that may, may not be on. Um, and then I'll fix it and then go back and reshoot the video. Now, that's happened numerous times. So that's a good opportunity to, uh, you know, before the crowd comes in or before the, the event to just double check your setup, make sure everything's square, make sure everything is covered, make sure all the uh, cables are dressed and uh, everything looks perfect. So. Yeah. And that's, that's the hard thing is that um, when you do stuff, sometimes, you know, again, we're all in a rush. We're all trying to get stuff taken care of. We're all trying to put things in the right place. Then you turn around, you take some pictures and you put it up on social media and you're like, oh man, yeah, I forgot to put this or that. You know, it, it's one of the things that, you know, I know from myself doing it, it's hard because you you turn around and you're like, oh man, I want to fix this. Then you find another thing, then you find another. And you 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 have to kind of nitpick yourself first and get it out there and get good stuff. But also you want to make sure that it looks nice for the couple. It looks nice for the client. It looks nice for your corporate client. If you're doing a bar, you want to make sure stuff is nice and neat and stuff like that put away. And if you make a mistake, hey, you know what? Some, if someone says, hey, you forgot a a cable tie. Yeah, I did. I'm I have a I took a picture, I snapped a picture real fast before I got a chance to put it up there. My mistake, my bad. It's one of the things that you want to go through and, and kind of like, you know, judge yourself a little bit and and you know, it's 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 a hard thing, but also you want to do a right job and it, it's always a great thing. Now, when you do that and you take your pictures, you go through your pictures or your video. I know you use a GoPro and stuff like that and take video of stuff going on and you go through things when you see uh, something that you've done over and over again and then you want to change something, do you try and figure out beforehand how you want to change it? Or you go, hey, next time I'm just going to go with this and I'm going to, you know, put the TV up higher or put the TV up lower? Or do you just, you know, say, hey, you know what, uh, I want to try this at home first before I go out into the public and see how it looks? I, I usually have that figured out before the setup. Um you know, if, if the TV is going to be, you know, up or down because I can't adjust it, uh, depending on if I've got subs, you know, out front, I will raise it up to its max. Um, if I'm up on a stage, I will lower it a bit so I can see out uh, over the front of the of the uh, DJ table. Um, so usually I have that pretty much figured out before the before the event. Um, so, you know, but if I look at it, um, it's one of the things that I, I struggle with sometimes is figuring out, you know, if I'm if I'm running totems and uh, speakers or totems and uh, you know my my towers, um, you know, do I put the speakers in close for a small crowd or do I keep them out on the outside of the totems or should I put the totems on the outside? You know, there's no right or wrong way. Um, you know, further apart your speakers are, the more stereo you're going to get. Uh, and for a bigger crowd, it may be better, but, you know, the, for every, for every instance that somebody could say that somebody says that that would work in that, in that instance, you know, that somebody else is going to say, no, it's better to do it the other way. So, um, there, there's, um, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other. So, but I do struggle with that, figuring out, you know, how I want to arrange my totems, whether I want them to be inside or outside of my speakers. So, but what, that's what usually... Uh, for, for me, I, I normally put the speakers on the far, far ends for the bigger crowds. One thing I run into is, I'm sure you run into it too, and sure Dwayne runs into it and all the DJs run into it, is sometimes space confines you with things. And with the way arrays work with a wide cast, I look at them being on the outside is better than being on the inside. And this way... If they got run into the, the array, which again with the LD systems, the, the sub down below or the Mauis or the um, RCFs, it, it, it's it's a little harder to knock over than a regular two way speaker or two way speaker and a sub. Um, so if someone bumps into the speaker and not bumping into the totem and knocking a moving head or knocking a, a light of some kind, I, I, I kind of think that's a kind of a protector a little bit too. But yeah, I, 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 I struggle a lot of times with stuff too, with where speaker placement, because I want stuff to look good and be centralized, but also I want things to, you know, I, I'm one of those guys who 
counts how many squares that there's squares on the floor between things. Like the picture I put up on my social media for the wedding I did last weekend, um, there's a fireplace and there's squares on the floor and it counted how many squares, six squares over, never smaller squares. They're like six inch squares versus one foot squares. So it went six squares over. And that's where the edge of the speaker was. And then the back was the edge of the floor where they had the metal strip around there. So it's like one of the things that like, I like things symmetrical. So it's like, you know, I like to think things look, but little touches like that helps out tremendously. That makes you even and stuff like that. And I had all the room in the world to spread out. So I had no problem with that versus the wedding I did a, a few weeks prior to at the hotel. I was between doors and I'm not going to block doors. So I had a little bit of room each side, but the speakers were next to me, which I like to have further out. I like to have, you know, a few feet each side. And I was filling a whole entire big room with sound. So it, it's one of the things there's no perfect setup with things, but I look at it, there's room. If you can spread out, great. If you can't, you know, again, you got to do what you got to do its best. And yeah, I, Jeff, I do the same thing, buddy. I, I count squares as well. Yeah, you know, I know, I know, I know. I, that's, that's what I say. You have, you have perfect what, setups. One thing that gets me, though, and it's probably gotten you guys as well and Dwayne too, um, uh, when you're setting up in a corner, you know, you can't count, you know, exact squares that way. So Angles, you try yep. to do the right, you try to do the 45, you know, what I do is I try to make that perfect 45 degree angle with my, uh, with, with my booth and, uh, and then figure out speaker placement, you know, outside of that. But I, I always have to go out in front of the setup a couple of times and I'm like, okay, that speaker's a little off. So you know, let's bring it back this way or whatever. So ne it never fails. Yeah, and that's that's half the battle right there with everything. Um, all you can do is do your best. Sometimes, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be off a little bit. And uh, you, you just look at it and go, okay, fine, great. There's ways of doing things. You know, um uh Ben Stoll, um over at uh, NFLX Pro, uh, he has a bunch of stuff up on YouTube with Dish Jockey News. Uh, the, he goes over stuff like where subwoofer placements and subwoofer information and speaker placements and how to do things. There's a lot of education there. And he is a uh, basically a bad scientist with that area. And it's some great information. Sometimes that helps with placements and make you decide things. But also, it's how you how you want to protect things. You want to protect, you know, you don't want speakers in the middle of the floor so people don't trip over it. You don't want things to look bad. You don't want things to get knocked over and destroyed. So it's a hard thing to do. And as a professional, again, you got to do what's best. And sometimes you, ha you have to kind of compromise. Say, okay, I can't exactly get the speak you know, speaker this way. So I got to have it over here versus over there. And again, I struggle like you do. And again, you, I, I, everyone here, I love their setups. I, I look at their setups. I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. And I, I know that you've done some great setups and you're, you're kind of like me with a lot of things. And it's like, yeah, cotton squares is, is kind of a little OCD sometimes, but it's like, I just want, I just want it right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got all that money tied up in all that gear. You might as well make it look good. Right. Yeah, and sound good. Sounding good and looking good is very, very important. Mr. Dixon, I was uh, talking to uh, Jeff here about, you know, he takes pictures, and we're talking a little beforehand. Uh, he takes pictures and so forth, uh, video before a gig. You know, I'm sure, and yeah, I know you do too, because you get gig laws. Uh, and at your gig log, you look at stuff, and you post those uh, pictures sometimes to social media or video social media. Hey, I'm here. And then you look at it and you go, oh, man, yeah, this speaker was two feet the wrong way or this or that. And you're like, do you go back and fix that? Do you try to take a picture and look at it and go, okay, what do I need to fix and make sure that it's 100%? Or do you go, okay, take note. Next time I'm here or I do this, I need to put the speakers another four or two away or I need to – you know, adjust my height of my booth, or I need to maybe stay, make sure my scrim is, you know, uh, straighter or something. What do you usually do to critique your own equipment, your own look? Um, usually when I take pictures, it's usually, it's, it's an afterthought because I'm always in a position where I'm rushing, trying to set up. So if I take a picture, it's because I'm, I'm trying to make a, 
a point of posting because I'm trying to do the posting thing. But when I look at a picture and something's off, usually I usually catch it before I do it because I used to like when I, my speakers, I set it up and now I go in the front and actually look. So um, and then. Yeah, I don't take pictures and really look at it like that. It's just one of those things I was like. Oh, it might be cool to do it this time, like a certain, a different way. Like when I got the um LED lights to put in front of the scrim, I mean my uh, rock um Rockville booth. Um, yeah, I was just like, yeah, I don't really critique like that. My, I guess my mind is different. <laughs> well, it, it's not just critiquing your own setup, but also it's. It's nice to show clients what you can do in a situation. And this is this goes into marketing a little bit too. I always try to take pictures of almost every place I'm at one way or another if I can do it. And it's because of the fact that I want to show people I was there at that venue. This is what I can do for them at that venue. And I can always explain the customer got this package, wanted this, 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 this. And I can customize it to do this, this, and this at that venue. So I think that that's also another thing. It, it's it's not just critiquing yourself and making sure that things look right, cables are tucked. And like I said before, before you came in, uh, I have a picture of a wedding show. Uh, the cart wheel was hanging out. I had to go back and address uh, address that and, you know, adjust the, uh, the tablecloth. You know, and I, I see sp sometimes a speaker not set right. Um, how do you go back and fix that or a light off? Okay, fine, great. I took this picture. This light was not on. I got to go back, turn the light back on. Stuff like that. It's things like that I, I catch. And sometimes I post stuff to social media and go, I look at it. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, I, I go back and fix this. So it's it's always little critiques for me. But also, I want to show a customer what can be done for my services. And, and you know, again, just like posting a gig log, just like posting any any information on social media, we want to do that so we can showcase that we know this venue, we know this very well, and look what we can do. Look how we can make your event, whatever it is, birthday party, wedding, bar mitzvah, whatever you're doing, look, I can make this special. This is how I'm doing it here for this customer. I can do the same or do it totally different for you. You tell me. It's kind of like it gives them options. And it, 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 I, I equate it to people kind of place themselves into that picture if they can place themselves into the picture, hearing the music, hearing the stuff they want to do, they can get into a conversation with you and start that ball rolling with that conversation. Yeah, I guess I got a different kind of clientele because a lot of the people I get, it's more so just, I don't know. I guess because I, I would say I, I do more outside wedding stuff as opposed to weddings. I would say the weddings would be more making sure everything is nice, neat, and presentable. But I found that like doing like um, community kind of stuff, as long as it's not a hazard, a tripping hazard or anything, they just want the music up and send that by. So that's where my mind is most of the time. Yeah, and that, that's one of the things that we all are in that way, especially when a venue gives you a small window to set up and people are asking you questions, you're trying to set stuff up and people walk up to you going, uh, what, what about this, what about that? And yeah, it, it happens almost everywhere. I'm blessed the fact that I have Tracy with me and she handles a lot of that being the coordinator and she can go talk to them and say, okay, fine, great. Well, I'm setting things up, plugging things in, getting the computer up and running. And it, it's it's a blessing. Um, sometimes, you know, with the two of us working, uh, we get things done, of course, faster, but it, it's it's a hard one. Again, it's it's a hard thing to do, and especially you're you're trying to make sure you're doing what your client hired you to do. If you're doing you know music for a birthday party or music for a corporate event or some something else, yeah, they want the music up and running. And it's it's one of the things like where I, there's to me there's never a bad opportunity to take a picture, and you know this way you know from year to year especially it's the same event, same group that hires you for an, a yearly event, a Christmas party, uh, you know, a celebration of some kind, you know, okay, I'm set up here in this room. I'm by this doorway here. I'm on this wall. There's a bunch of outlets there. It also, if you can't remember where the power is at, let's say you have a venue, you got set up, 
and there's an outlet, but it's not close by. It's further down the wall. Well, I got a picture of that room. I can see, oh, well, the outlet over here to my left or to if I'm standing to my right, that outlet there is 15 feet away. So I need to run a longer cord over to that outlet to make sure I have power from it. So it does help you as well. And like when you're talking to clientele and talking to the client, this is what I had for last year for the setup. Would you like to do some enhancements to your setup to make it more pop? Do I want to do some lighting? Do you want to do this? And this way also helps you maybe do some upsells too. And you can make, you know, a few extra dollars. Never, no one ever said, you know, making extra money is a bad thing, you know. <laughs> um, Mikey Mike said, uh, Photoshop clone. Yeah, you could Photoshop things, you know, I guess you can. Um, you can put a disclaimer up on all photos are unedited and raw images. Yes, you can. Yes. and But the thing is that, do you want to put a raw image up on social media really fast or take a picture and double check. You know, it's 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 one of the things. It's sometimes a hard thing to do. Um, I love when the venue has everything set up, and it's all off, and they won't let you adjust anything. Yes, and I kind of ran into this. There's a one wedding, the small little wedding. Uh, they couldn't adjust it because there wasn't enough room. The tables made the sweetheart table off, like three or four feet to the left of when you're looking at it to the left side. It wasn't you know, perfectly straight. So it's, it's stuff like that. Sometimes that they got to do stuff. Uh, I have a quick question for everyone. Do you label or mark your equipment like search protectors, lights, and other equipment? Uh, good question. Do you label? Uh, now I will answer first part of it. I do label the uh, bins. I have a bunch of totes that uh, we've gotten from my uh, actual home Depot. Um, they're heavy-duty totes, not the normal. We got away from the black and yellow totes because they cracked real quickly. Uh, we have the um, the more heavier-duty totes. They're a thicker, heavier plastic. But, yes, we do have uh, – I have a P-touch, and we P-touch the outside of them. And, you know, it says, like, uh, IEC cords, or it says, you know, extension cords, or it says, you know, power, or it says, uh, you know, like for our RCF uh, black up, I have a black bin when in there it has – you know, the poles, it has uh, X, uh, XLR cables, it has a uh, power strip in there, you know, a firm and power strip. It has that stuff in that bin. So Tracy or I can look at it real quickly and say, oh, this is for, this is our, this is our tote for the uh, request table and stuff like that. So everything, we try to mark as much as possible or like uh, we have uh, Sennheiser stuff. So we have like a lapel microphone, a uh, handheld microphone. So we can look at it and go, oh, that's a lapel microphone. I need that for a ceremony and pull that real quickly. It makes things life easier for me. So I'm going to start with Dwayne this time. Um, Dwayne, do you mark your containers, boxes, or items to tell you what it is so you can look through things real quickly? And how do you mark them if you do? Oh, yeah, because I, uh, I pack everything in my closet. So um, like each one of the bags or containers will have what it is inside so i don't have to like open it up like um my audio cables like xlrs and all that um i got a bag that's marked with all like dmx cables and then i have my bags my light bag so i know exactly what what is inside that bag but as far as labeling them as my stuff i don't label them each individual thing so most of those things are when i put it out it's right there with me but if it's out where it can be visible or like huge, I have my little stickers, like the way Brentley has his little brand stickers. I have those that say me sci-fi entertainment and I plaster on, on the side. So that's how I label them. And that's, that, that's a great thing, especially with, um, there are a lot of manufacturers you can buy professional made heavy duty bags for the sound and music industry. And, um, uh, Mr. Dixon being a musician, and a teacher, I'm sure he has those uh, those bags around for all his years being a musician. And they're great to have, you know, bags. Uh, we do totes because it's a little easier to stack in the van and stuff like that. We do have a couple bags of stuff that we do bring in. But it, it's, it's being organized, I think, is a huge thing. Now, when you label them, do you label, do you put a piece of, like, uh, tape on it? Or do you use, like, a, a Sharpie, like a, a gold or a silver Sharpie right on black or anything like that? Or how do you usually mark the stuff? I have tape on the um, on the, 
the plastic bins. And then on like the bags and stuff, I have I have bought uh, one of those tag things, you know, with the little string and the tag that you can write on. So I have that. And then inside the bins, like the XLRs, I have them in, you know, a regular shopping bag from the grocery stores. But then I have that little tag on it that would say like small XLRs or, or the long, super long XLR. So I know exactly what size I'm looking at as well inside. I'm also glad you brought that up for the bags. You're, and you're talking about the, not the regular little plastic bags. You're talking about the kind of like the permanent heavier, I'm not cloth or they're, they're poly bags. They look uh -uh. like the old style shopping bags. Know, there's the regular, the regular shopping bags. They're okay. inside the containers. But the ones I carry, the bags that I carry, like my XLRs right there, the, you know, the cloth one, the regular, mm -hmm. cloth one, the heavy yep. duty one. But the, um, Plastic bags is pretty much so they can, the cables can be like separated. So they're not like something I carry back in the fourth because they'll rip up. Except for the new new bags that they have at the grocery stores. The real thick ones like Walmart, they have the real fancy thick ones now. Now those are pretty good. Yeah, I, we have a couple of the, um, again, the permanent, again, they're not fabric, they're plastic, but they're the permanent shop bags. You can bring your own there. You could you know, buy them for like a buck or two from the store. And mm -hmm. um, I actually have one, one white socks one, and we have another one. It's just a color uh, that we purchase. And sometimes you carry stuff in. Um, you carry stuff in with that too. Cause it, it's, it's sometimes a bag is easier for certain things. Uh, and I, we keep the shopping bag on the van. Cause in case we need, Hey, you know what? I know this venue, I need an extra 50 foot, um, you know, XLR cable. I kind of like, having the bins i can shop out of the bins and put it into the bag and carry that one little bag in versus carrying a big huge bin of xlr cables because i don't need 30 xlr cables or 50 iec cables i may need one 25 foot iec cable i can put that into a bag and carry that with the rest of the stuff put it in there and then know hey i have one xlr cable or one iec cable or two or three of this in there and i can always put it back which is it, it, I, I think that's a really smart thing and you know again you're recycling you're keeping green because it's stuff you're going to use over and over again and then when you're done with the rugger plastic bags you can take it back to the store and they recycle it there so and you can you're going back to the store anyways like every week or two to go shopping so you can always replenish those bags anytime <laughs> Jeff, what about you? How do you uh, how do you how do you write your stuff down on your uh, equipment? Uh, I don't mark a lot of stuff because all of my cases are uh, none of them are very few of them are identical. Um, I use a lot of um, porta brace cases. Professional, you know, videographers use a lot of porta brace stuff. Um, you know, it's it's like a hard bottom canvas side, and you know, it's you know you know really good zippers and. So that stuff works for me. I know where everything is. Uh, now, if I have someone assisting me like my son and I'll tell him, okay, grab the blue case or grab the black case, um, you know, sometimes there are more than one and they may look similar. I know the difference. He may not. So, uh, but it's not that big of a deal. I'm not going to mark it up. Now, there's a couple of light cases that I've had that are identical. And one has like my uh, IR4 hex bars and the other has the Freedom hex bars. And uh, so I threw just a little uh, tiny carabiner on the IR4s. Those are the ones I use most of the time. Um, so I know on the outside of the case, that's the one I grab. Uh, plus, you know, in the basement where, where I store everything, um, you know, everything has its place and there's a place for everything. So when I, when I'm bringing stuff back from a gig, uh, everything goes back on the shelves where I know, uh, I know they are. And, and Mike, Mike had a good point here. He's, he was talking about, uh, marking actual equipment and, uh, you know, with your branded name, so it doesn't get lost or mixed up. And that's a great idea. A lot of my stuff is not marked. So, uh, you know, it like, uh, up lights, you know, if you've got, you know, 16 of those around a venue, um, if another, uh, event is close by or in another room, or if there was one, one coming up behind you or whatever, it's good to, it's good to have your equipment marked with your name on it. And, uh, so yeah, that, that's always a good thing to, whether it's just a impermanent marker or, you know, just a sticker or whatever, you know, it, it's good to mark your equipment. It's smart to do that. 
Um, but yeah, uh, for me, it's knowing what cases are what. And I, I'm lucky that I have uh, a case for everything I own. So uh, when everything's in the van, it's uh, or in, in the truck, it's it's all in cases. So, and that's one of the things is, is important as well. You said a, a thing for every place and a place for everything. Organization. We've talked about this before. Organization is very very big, and making sure that you know what's going in and out. And this is, I have some things marked, Mike. Um, I'll, I'll go back to Dwayne in a second here um, with our name on it. Um, and it, it's like, you know, some chairs and stuff like that that we have. Um, our high boy is marked. So, because, you know, so if a venue doesn't say, oh, that's our high boy, we know it's our high boy because it's written on the bottom because the high boy is gray and it's written on the bottom with black, you know, Sharpie TBM Productions. So it, it's one of the things that, you know, certain things we have marked, but like up lights, stuff like I have not marked those. Uh, and the reason why is that because we kind of do an inventory, what's going in and what's coming out. So, the rock row rock wedges when they open up there's six slots on there and every slot in there has a light if i have one case um that's off to the side that has bad lights in there i have a couple lights in there the other lights that are good are actually sitting on top of the case at the storage uh um facility and we can grab those extra lights and keep them separate, but we know those lights are addition to the lights in the case. And then we put that into one of those big, heavy, again, plastic bags. It's not, it's like fabric, but it's not fabric. Um, and yeah, Rachel, friend of the show, who's been on here a few times, uh, she did a great video on this. Yeah, she did. It was awesome. Uh, she did a video uh, not too long ago also about uh, uh, some of the things she does, like a little riser she put, she got for Amazon. Uh, her mats and stuff like that. She always does great stuff to uh, help uh, why she just does things and help with uh, making sure your equipment is protected and stuff is safe. Uh, Walmart sells the oil-based Sharpies for two ninety eight. dollars Well, there you go. You can go to Walmart if mm -hmm. Walmart's near you, or I'm sure you can find one on Amazon. Amazon might be a little bit more. But that is a good thing if you're in an area with you're afraid of your equipment, um, you know, like an uplight or something like that, right in the bottom of the uplight, you know, your company name or initials. Um, I, one thing I wouldn't say to do is write on the back of your laptop, your company name and draw on there. Uh, I know some DJs do that. I'm not a fan for that, but if you're going to do that, I would say have it professionally done, get a you know professional skin. Um, but that's just me. If you want to do it, it's, it's your equipment. You can grave crayons and write pictures on it if you want to, if you, or you th use it as a sketch or whatever you want. It's up to you. Uh, Mr. Dixon, when you, um, when, when you go to venues, uh, have you ever marked your equipment or do you mark your equipment to let people know that that's your uplight or your speaker or your whatever? Uh, normally, no, because I'm usually the only one, you know, the only entertainment there. But if it's like school stuff um, where we doing it, like my group is performing and there's other schools or other things going on, like when we go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or anything like that, I will mark my stuff or mark the school's name on there, put tape on it, and then, you know, write the names on it because people like to pick pe other people's stuff up. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And uh, Mike just said that, you know, he has venues. They have multiple events going. I do too here, and they have, some DJs have the same equipment. Yeah, and usually it's a separate room. It's totally separate. There's usually walls, doors, and other things. And most of the time when there are DJs coming into my room, I know them, so they're saying hi to me, or they're asking, hey, can I borrow something? And again, if they're going to walk away with an uplight or something like that, again, it can happen, sure. Um, a staff member could grab it. It can happen. Uh, and I will tell a quick story. Uh, what happened to one of my friends who's also been on the show a while ago, Darren Lee, uh, with Premier Entertainment. Uh, he was working with a photographer. Photographer put their camera down. Uh, sat down to eat real quick, came back, uh, didn't tell Darren the camera was there, um, didn't tell him anything. But a lot of times, you know, photographers will put their bag kind of near your area, which for whatever reason they like to do that. And a lot of times I want to know, so if they have something there, I can watch it for them and kind of keep an eye on it and make sure no one comes there and it's kind of secured in our area. But if no one tells you anything, they don't tell you, they just put it down, it's, whatever, but someone stole the camera 
uh, from the wedding. And the photographer had all these pictures on there. And unfortunately, he had to go tell the couple that all these pictures I took, uh, you know, they, they took the camera. And he had to shoot the rest of the night with a backup camera. But he also lost some pictures he didn't have, didn't change out the SD cards as much as he uh, should have. And again, it's one of the things that's not a small thing either. You know, it's a camera with a nice lens on it, and that's not cheap. You know, I always teach photographers who spends more money, us or them, because you know they spend three, four thousand dollars for one lens, and we spend three, four thousand dollars for a pair of speakers. You know that we can't, we're not taking it into the house and using. You know, you you add up, you know, a price of a thousand dollars per speaker, two thousand dollars, and you start adding a couple of lights, you get very quickly up there in cost and. It's it's one of the things that you know things have happened, and you know again marketing equipment. It's not a bad thing. Uh, Mike said we have DJs from New York City and Jersey uh, that DJ and events in your area. Uh, yeah, I can see that again where you're at in Pennsylvania. Um, you guys are far enough, close enough to that, but far enough away. And a couple hour ride, you're in New York or you're in a Jersey area. You know, again, I, I could see that. And again, you have to do what's, what you need to do to protect your gear. And hopefully no one grabs your stuff and touches your stuff because that's the last thing you want to do, especially, you know, going to an insurance company and making a claim. Um, no one wants to make a claim to your insurance company because that, that, those right there, insurance companies always look to get money out, not get not get money out of you. Oh, yeah, you want to get money out of you, but not pay you money when something happens. Um, I heard this happen so many times that I always allow the photographer to keep their equipment by me. Yeah, again, that's one of the things I try to be nice and say. Plus, also, a lot of times photographers, I love photographers, but sometimes some of their bags and stuff like that, uh, they have luggage and other things. They bring their equipment in because they have so many things they're bringing in and, and they don't have I think we're kind of lucky because with bins and stuff like that, I've yet to see a photographer walking in with a bin with their lenses in there. <laughs> Usually they have it in a, ba in a bag or they have it in a, a suitcase I see. And, you know, again, I'd much rather have it hidden a little bit so that way people are not seeing that. Uh, but let me go back to Jeff because Jeff, you know, he does do uh, uh, video uh, professionally. When you, as a, in your professional side, not as the DJ side, as a professional uh, who takes video and deals with uh, photography. Uh, when you go out in the field for your regular daytime job um, and you bring gear with you, uh, and I know you bring in some bags and stuff like that, but you try to make sure it's secured around you because, again, I'm sure that stuff is not cheap, especially if you're doing a commercial and that production value is there. But what do you usually do to try to secure that stuff? Just keep it near you within a few feet. You want to take a couple things out. How do you do that to secure that stuff? Uh, yeah, you keep it close to you. You never walk away from it too far, especially the camera. You know, that's the most valuable thing in the lens. Um, you know, we've had people accidentally walk off with a microphone on them. You know, uh, normally I will catch that, but, you know, it does happen. Um, they don't go too far usually. Um, but traveling with gear is always tough. Uh, you know, when you're traveling with a camera and uh, tripod and lights and everything, you know, it, it, it becomes, um, you know, our, my mantra or, or what we, what we do is your camera never leaves your side. Uh, you, you carry your camera on a plane and you, you stow it in the overhead bin and you put pillows around it. Um, yeah, some people will, will put their cameras in, you know, uh, road cases and ship them that way. Um, but you know, just like any valuable piece of equipment, it's, uh, it, it, it has a chance of being stolen, uh, especially going through the airport. Um, so, you know, one thing we do is, uh, we don't have a carry on, a personal carry on. We carry the camera as a carry on. At least that's what we, we do at, at our station. Um, so you know, it, it, it varies widely, but you always want to take care of the camera. Yeah, And the, the other thing is, you know, airports are pretty notorious for, you know, just destroying luggage and you don't want uh, a very valuable piece of equipment getting, you know, bashed around, you know, somewhere behind the uh, scenes. So, uh, so, you know, that, you know, carrying it yourself, you know, that that's the best way to do it. So, but just, you know, regular shoot, just, you know, you keep everything in the car, in your vehicle, in the van, 
um, and you bring it out as needed. If you don't need lights, you just leave the lights in there. If you need, if you need lights, you, you bring those in. And one, just one little thing that I do when I'm loading and unloading, if I'm uh, putting, if, I, if I'm done with the shoot and I'm putting stuff back into the van, I'll wait and put the camera in there last uh, because just putting a camera in a van and walking back in and, and grabbing a light and coming back out, that camera could be gone. So, you know, you don't want to chance that. So that's just what we do. So uh, two very quick follow questions to you, because again, you know, it's, I know how much stuff it costs is not cheap. Um, what brand do you do like you mostly deal with for a camera and then the body itself, do you have an estimate what they usually go for out there for brand new from a, you know, a company that sells them to uh, production companies? Um, we use Sony. Um, you know, we, we pretty much use Sony exclusively for cameras. That's all, all I've ever used. I mean, the last other type of camera that I used was probably 25 years ago. It was an Ikigami. Uh, though, those aren't very numerous anymore, um, but those were very pricey at the time. Um, but the, the cameras now have come, the, the price has come down dramatically in the past 20 years. Um, uh, my camera that I currently am shooting with is the body is uh, about nine grand. Uh, the lens is about 2,500. Uh, so it's, you know, back when I first got into this business, um, the cameras, uh, the ca a camcorder uh, was probably 30 grand uh, and the lens was 10. So that's the difference. Yeah, that, that's just the, you know, it's just simplification of, uh, of parts and, you know, just mass production and just, you know, stuff getting cheaper, you know, as far, you know, in the past 20 years. And that that was a Betamax camera, right? The for the professional Beta Cam. Betamax is a consumer uh, version of that. That you know, you, people had Betamaxes at home that they would use. Uh, Beta Cam is the uh, is what we used to use. That was a tape format um, that is no longer in existence. <laughs> so, yeah, the last time uh, the last Beta Cam I shot with was uh, I want to say mid nineties mid to late nineties. And then we went to a for a format called SX, which was a digital tape. Uh, then we went to a, um, a smaller tape DV cam tape. And from that we went to everything is uh, digital now. So it's, it, it's recording on cards. SD cards. Um, no, you can, they have adapters. You can put an SD card in as for an emergency. Uh, but most are, are XD cards. Uh, they're a lot faster. Uh, transfer rate, the bit rate on those is, uh, you, know, uh, you know, five times faster than, uh, than that's, especially if you're shooting like 4K or, or even six or 8K, you know, you need that, that bit rate, so. And that, that's, the, that's the, the fun thing, how like is involved in, evolved in DJing, how it went from basically from vinyl to CDs, you know, to, uh, you know, MP3s. And again, there's some people did, uh, did tapes as well, you know, cassette tapes in there, mixing stuff in or doing VHS tapes, uh, you know, some of the video DJs, they have like two VCRs and a video transfer, uh, video, uh, to transfer one video VCR to another uh, VCR and have the VCR playing in one music video and quick play the other one and, and slide over and basically like, you know, a controller, you know, you're or a mixer, you're you're going from one to another, and you know, mixing in videos together. I, I, I've, you know, again, it, there's a lot of technology that's changed versus you know doing video now. It's it's just on the computer. Uh, but I gotta ask you this: if you had to go back to one of the older formats, what would be your format you would love to go back to, if you could, just to have fun with it? Um, the SX uh, digital tape was really good quality that, that the cameras were really good quality and the cam the camcorders were really good quality those were uh those were i think we we had the best looking video shot with those um but i mean uh, you know, in, in today's age i mean with um you know some cameras now like you know you got red you know nikon just bought red um oh they did know, th those cameras are just in incredible the the detail you know the the quality on the on, on the image you know the um, you know, just the, 
the dynamic range of those cameras are just phenomenal. It blows cameras away from even 10 years ago. It's amazing. I mean, you can, you can shoot sunlight coming in a window and still, still see a picture on the wall in interior, you know, the dynamic range is just, you know, so you can, you know, it's like 16, 16, 17 stops. It's just crazy. It, it's, it's one of, I didn't know that Nikon bought uh red, but I know I've seen, I seen a couple of videographers with red cameras. Um, and I know they're not there a lot of TV shows, uh, uh, CPD, Chicago police, uh, Chicago fire here, uh, and Chicago Med when they do it here, a lot of this stuff on NBC, um, NBC studios, uh, they use red, uh, la what I had a, a customer that was a latrician on uh, CPD, uh, the TV show. And he was saying, this was going back a few years. They were recording at 6k. Uh, then to make it future proof, and I know AK, and I've seen 12 Ks out there. Uh, I don't know how pre prevalent it is in that area, but I know like Japan. Japan's always way in advance. They have like 30k TVs and all this crazy stuff they have over there that costs a million dollars. But it, it's interesting when that stuff starts coming across the ocean into the United States, and it's used by regular people working every single day filming TV movies and so forth to see that stuff and see that money and it, it, it's nice to, it's nice to see and it's kind of cool because it's like oh wow that's a red camera I, I know they're expensive i know they're really cool but looking at one i, I was amazed how small and compact it is it's not really huge you know uh, i i guess you know when i associate cameras most you know cam camcorders or professional ones usually are more base like the TV, like what you usually carry, the ones that carry over your shoulder kind of thing. Um, and again, this red was pretty compact for for uh, a camera. And then the lenses, of course, were you know crazy. But it, it's it's like anything else. It's yeah. it's very interesting, Mister Dixon. Yeah. Uh, for you, when you uh, do stuff, I know you have a uh, uh, three sixty cam and stuff like that. Um, and you've taken pictures over the years and you've done stuff with video over the years. Is there a format you love or would love to go back to, or is there, are you happy more with the more modern take on video? Again, I, I know neither you or I are professional video people uh, like Jeff is Jeff deals with that every day in his regular day job. Uh, we're just, you know, we're, 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 we're amateurs to it, but it, it's interesting how the technology has changed for us, even amateurs grabbing hold of a phone or whatever. But what do you usually what, what do what do you like? What do you like shooting a three hundred and sixty camera more, or do you like using your um, your phone more? I like using my phone because it's more it's right there and it's ready. But only thing about the um, iPhone stuff is whatever phone you get, that's the only memory you have on there. You really can't expand it. Whereas the um, 360 is cool. But for me, I found that 360 is good for when I take pictures right close by. If I do anything um, far away and then try to zoom in and do post um, production on it, it comes out blurry. It's not as clear as my iPhone. But I do like the fact that I can get everything around me if I don't have to do like zooming in. And it's not the 360. It's not all that great as far as far as being in low light kind of stuff. So that's the only drawback. Whereas the iPhone, the cameras, it's perfect. But it's just the memory on, on my iPhone. But if I had that, to go back, yeah. yeah. If I had that, to go back, I would like to go back or at least find something that can um, play VHSs and turn it digital digitally without having to plug in like a VCR and then this little doohickey thing. And then you have to watch a two, you know, watch play for two hours to get a video and then still do post um, production on it. Cause I found a whole bunch of, I've been doing line dancing on Tuesday. So I found my old line dance tape. Oh, there we go. Yeah. But the thing is, it's also scary too, to try to find something that's going to play it. And then with my stuff, it's old. So when I, you just have to be hopeful that when you put it in, the machine doesn't eat your tape. And then the one thing done. I would the one thing I would say to do, you can buy them on Amazon. I actually have a VCR. I do have mm -hmm. a VCR. I do have some movies. And before I put a tape into the VCR, 
and I bought one. And I got to buy, I got to buy another one, a head cleaner. You know, those head cleaners mm. used to go to like, you know, Kmart. And you see the head cleaners next to the VCRs for like nineteen ninety nine. They had the little drops of liquid you put it in there. Yeah. I always because it cleans out all the dust in the wheels. It lubricates the head. And it lessens the likelihood of a tape being eaten. And I much rather have the tape on the head cleaner be eaten than a v a video VHS tape I'm putting in there. Especially like our wedding tape or a movie that I have that I only have it on VHS. That kind of stuff. I, I you know I'd love to. Um, protect, and that's one of the things I would definitely say if you can look at Amazon, get a tape, a head cleaner, use that first before you put it in the VCR, and that way you kind of know. Plus, if you're if you're adventurous, you can always take the cover off, just make sure all the uh, the belts are tight. You can buy new belts on Amazon, stuff like that. Look at the brand, look at stuff, and you look at make sure the belts the right size. Because a lot of times, you know, again, VCRs haven't been made for a while. If you got a VCR from the '90s, like I do, '98, '99. Panasonic forehead hi-fi stereo VHS VCR. Ooh, you know, <laughs> you, those 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 rubber bands basically they do stretch. Um, I, I I think maybe this fall I'm gonna do an adventure and see about ordering brand new replacement belts for that and and do it. I've watched there's a guy on YouTube, uh, Techno Man. Um, he's a Brit, um, so he's across the pond there, and he does all this retro electronics and he's got a lot of cool stuff there's there's a lot of technology out there we didn't get here but they had in japan that you know record video that you know um is high quality and you can actually you know fast forward and stuff like that but they have like video players and they have a cassette not a tape cassette but a digital cassette you put in there maybe kind of like what jeff has i'm sure jeff again professional equipment he could take the cassette out of the camera he has puts it into a player at, at at editing the booth and stuff like that and kind of gives that kind of like the old school like set pull a full VC, VHS VCR tape out and putting it into a, a VCR you're just you know I'm just gonna set kind of do the same thing and editing through their banks of equipment and I'd love to uh I, I'd love to uh come and see that uh because I've been to a movie a TV studio once through a friend uh, he's long retired from uh, the CBS aff affiliate here. Got to see behind the scenes. It was really cool meeting the uh, uh, news anchors and stuff like that. Um, it was really cool meeting everyone, uh, but also seeing how they do things. It's just, it, it's amazing. It is amazing. It's it's a lot of craft. And people like Jeff are kind of unsung heroes out there, um, making sure that uh, that information, that video comes out and people are having fun with it. And I think cool things come in it. What? What? Um, he's he's coming in to say What's goodbye, up? man. Yeah, I just jumped in to say hi. I just got come back from the pool. Oh, see, the pool is more important than the show. Oh God, that's <laughs> well. You're on vacation. You're on vacation. Well, well, I'm... yeah. Well, staycation. I well, want to hang out my again, it doesn't matter. South Dakota tomorrow. You're, that's not that's not your house. That's not your bed. So and you and you know you have you don't have a pool. I already do you have a pool. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah. Cool thing. Did you get your? Did you get the sound switch today uh, from uh, Mike? Um. Yeah. Oh well, he said it was delivered, but I didn't really see it. I him in Myrtle Beach, so in my house is all the way in Conway, so okay. I'll probably get it tomorrow. Okay. Well, again, when you get it, you get it. Just make sure you get a hold of Mike and tell him, you know, thank you. Other than that, uh, I know you came I right will. at the last minute here. Um, we were talking about how yeah. we mark uh, bins and stuff like that and talk a little bit about video technology and video recording. Really, really quickly for you, and uh, kind of keep it to like a minute or two because we have a minute or two left. Um, organization, how do you mark your bins? Do you, uh, you know, put on like with a Sharpie marker I don't. and I write don't. on there? I don't. I don't, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of it. Okay. So no, I'm not a big fan of it. I never mark my bin. Don't already know which bins are. Which. Okay. And, and the only reason I ask is it's, you know, no. some people like to do that for organization. Some people, you know, again, to make things easier for themselves, they remember, Oh yeah, this has this in it. Mm -hmm. But uh Mike, well, yeah, Mike I said, know that yeah, I already know. 
you already know my small bins are like my audio cables and my big ones are my my power cables. I already know that. Oh, you know from the size. Okay, you, you know exactly what it is. So again, it's been wow. The hour goes by so fast, so many times. Again, if you're tuning in now, make sure that you say hi to Cool Thing. <laughs> I know Mike did over there, and I appreciate <laughs> you all for watching the show. And if you haven't watched the show before, make sure you go by YouTube, watch it on YouTube. This will repeat uh, next Monday at noon. And Cool Thing's got a phone call. Hey, is it calling? is it Matt over there calling you? Here. Oh, my mom's calling me to see you. All right. I, I muted you just so that way you can have a private phone call there. Um, but again, I want to thank you guys all for tuning in. And I'm going to go ahead and unmute yourself there, a cool thing. There you go. Uh, I didn't want anybody to hear your yeah, prior conversation, yeah, yeah. your phone call, yeah, talking to whomever you're talking to, yeah. mom, dad, aunt, uncle, brother, sister. Well, it's my mom. Yep, yep. That's a private phone call. We don't want. Oh, come on. We don't want no one over there to hear your private conversation. So do me a thing, cool thing. Do me a thing, cool thing. I guess that's a cool thing to say. We're going to do a thing a few more times. Do me a favor, cool thing, and take us out for this week. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of DJ Roundtable. We'll see you guys next week. Peace out.